everybody. Welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us is every single LEGO Stormtrooper, Scout Trooper, Sand Trooper, all the different types of troopers, plus Royal Guard mini figures ever made in LEGO. There are 90 figs in this collection. 45 was the last time we did this video, maybe three years ago, so they've been adding quite a lot of figs in this time. And uh, we're going to be going through this collection chronologically from when they came out, what sets they came out in, and how much they are worth. But before we jump in, I do want to say that if you like this minifigure display case, uh, we have them in multiple different colors, and we sell them at our web store, www.brickfault.toys, made of red oak, built in America. They're very, very, very high quality, and uh, if this looks cool to you, uh, then you can check out the link in the description below. Right now, it is filled to max capacity, which is crazy. No more, no less. This is 90 figures in the case. Uh, technically, there's two rows of studs here, so maybe you might be able to fit like guys kind of hidden behind this, but really, this is what I would consider the absolute maximum capacity, and it looks pretty cool. I didn't mean to get exactly 90, it just kind of worked out that way. But anyways, a uh, lot of guys to get through, obviously. I'm gonna be going pretty quick to get through this entire collection in a relatively timely fashion, so let's start off with the very first guy back from 1999. All right, and believe it or not, the very first trooper was not a stormtrooper, but in fact a scout trooper. I'm not going to say the set names that appear. There's too many to talk about in this episode, so you'll just see these sets appear in the screen. But what makes this guy unique, aside from the fact that this is his uh, very early print there, look at his face. He's got a yellow face and a black visor, so you could take the helmet off and he would still look normal or relatively uh, useful there. So that's kind of interesting. You have the uh, the open visor piece. So yeah, you can see the little sheen on the inside. That's kind of fun. He's just five bucks. And then moving down here is the very first Stormtrooper. It's funny, some of the prints uh, for the front there were always kind of separated or offset. So you'll see on a lot of these helmets, there's just misprints here. It kind of looks like a little bit of a mustache, but this is the basic guy. He's got the early blaster, came out in several sets and is currently worth six bucks. Next up is our first Royal Guard. The thing that makes him unique is the fact that he's all red. They had slightly different variations of dark red or black hands later down the line, but he's all red. And that print for his body is the only print for any of these guys, wow, that thing is really stuck on his head. That print right there is the only one that never gets updated throughout any of the years, which is kind of crazy. So that's that's an interesting, unique thing about the Royal Guard fig. He basically just has different colored plastics on him. And you might think this guy has a different helmet print. He doesn't. It's just, uh, you know, the printing wasn't that consistent. These, these blue lines are a little thicker. The only thing that actually makes him unique is this, is the Legoland or the Lego Group uh, logo print on his back. So that's interesting, he's 2002, and then this guy was also released. He's the first snow trooper. What actually makes him unique is both the black hips and the fact that he's got this Lego logo. According to my research, he came out, I mean, like technically right before the actual first snow trooper that doesn't have any back printing. My guess is their release was relatively around the same side. Uh, the same time and um, it's probably worth showing these two guys off together because the only difference here is this is the old gray hips and light bluish gray hips you might not be able to see it in the light but that really is the difference but they're pretty much the exact same figure and then the same thing goes for the next two guys pretty much the same guys only he has black hands now and now we're moving on to one of my personal favorite types of troopers uh, the sand trooper I just really liked that orange pauldron this one's in pretty darn good condition he appeared in the first Moss Eisley Cantina set and sells for about 16 bucks. He's one of the first really sort of collectible guys in this collection. He's got the little mustache print, the little misprint, which is funny. And then the only fig released in 2005 is this guy, and he is very unique. He came out in just one set, but look, he's got leg printing. Lego experimented with adding extra detail to certain minifigure parts. Um, he's also got printing on his back, which is really nice. Uh, and he's pretty unique in that sense. I think it looks pretty good. I like that they managed to uh, make the belt connect in the groin piece there. That's not a bad, that's actually not a bad bit of detailing there, but it simply wasn't cost effective, so they stopped doing it. He is a $17 fig brand new, so pretty collectible. And then I totally forgot to mention in the beginning, but this is the original Stormtrooper. He has a yellow head, just like the Scout Trooper that you saw. And what makes this guy 
guy unique is that he's got both a flesh head and you can see that there's a little dotted nose pattern along the front of his helmet. If I show the uh, the last helmet off, you can see that's a little black strip, dotted nose strip, and then this guy has a black strip and uh, yeah, right there. That's the only thing that makes him different there. Flesh head and a uh, and a and a black strip. So, lots of Oops, sorry about that. Lots of very subtle differences, but technically these figs count as different releases. And all right, here is the next Royal Guard. He's got black hands instead of being completely red. He appeared in a couple of sets, including the Death Star. Let me just say right now, uh, there are guys called Death Star Troopers. I didn't include them in this collection because they're really kind of closer to crew members, so they would be in the officer slash crew member collection. Let me show these two guys off at the same time. Uh, they've got, they're just like the other Stormtroopers we've shown shown, except this time they both have black heads. So they've now got completely black heads. That's the only thing that makes them unique. And the differences, once again, are the stripe and the dotted line. Moving on to the next two guys. Here are two more uh, sand troopers, or sometimes they call them just like uh, stormtrooper commanders. They each came out in the same set, though this guy came out, uh, he was released I think in 2007 originally, and then as the same set was being produced the next year, uh, they just kind of updated the prints. And so you can see the dotted nose pattern and just the general improvement between one figure and the next. So technically they count as being different guys. And now we get our first really unique trooper in a, in a while. Uh, this is the first of the Shadow Troopers. So he's he's actually really cool. I like that he's completely black here. Uh, he's got some sand blue printing on the sides of his helmet, which pop out a little bit more. A little bit of chrome printing in the front, which really pops. And even a little bit of chrome reflective printing right down there at the bottom. He appeared in a couple of sets. Sells for five bucks brand new. I think that's pretty cool for such an old fig. Uh, and then here is the next Scout Trooper. There are some subtle differences on the chest printing. Technically that is an updated chest printing and he does not have the uh, yellow head with visor. It's an all black head this time. No printing on the back for the scout trooper though. And then you might have been distracted by this guy sitting in the corner of the frame. This is the chrome storm trooper. He's kind of leaned for it a little bit. There he is, he's really cool looking. Everybody likes him. This is what everybody wants for Chrome Phasma, and I and I definitely agree. He appeared in a promotional poly bag from 2009. He sells for 40 bucks, brand new. Uh, maybe a little bit more if he's in the actual poly bag. So not bad for an extremely collectible fig, and you can tell he's authentic because uh, they move the arms back when they spray the Chrome on, and so they have the minifigure arm painted back, so the back right there and there. It's a white minifigure piece uh, with little open white bits on the back of the torso. So anyways, uh, some of the newer chromed figs, they actually have a better technique and, uh, and they don't have those spots that are missing or they're in different areas of the figure. So anyways, that's just kind of a nice little detail. And we're moving on to a commander with a black pauldron. Technically, he's still considered a sand trooper. He's eight bucks and he also has this cool little build on his back. So he's got a little neck bracket included as well. Then from the Endor battle pack, we get a scout trooper and a storm trooper. And let me just take the helmets out of their hands because he's got an updated print. Scout Trooper is updated, uh, but they've also got uh, balaclava faces for the first time. Personally, this is my favorite kind of printing to get for any type of Stormtrooper fig. It makes the most sense because they've got black around the uh, edge of their neck instead of flesh color, which uh, is pretty standard nowadays. And then finishing off this round to 12 is a Sand Trooper who's really dirty. He's got a balaclava face under there as well, but really uh, the things that make him unique is that he's got an updated print for the body. The first time we're seeing prints for the legs on any of these figs. Now, I mean, coming back from that one offshoot in 2005. And uh, yeah, updated printing all around. Really, really good. And even the pauldron has some detailing as well. So this guy's uh, much, much more detailed. From the same set comes another Sand Trooper. He's got a white pauldron, same printing. I like that his, uh, I think that could be a tracker. Maybe it's a thermal detonator. 
detonator. It's just a, a single round stud. And I do want to point out that he's got the, uh, whoa, <laughs> his uh, head was stuck in the helmet there for a second. Uh, but he's got the tan face, the balaclava face. And I just wanted to show that uh, because they, they, or sorry, pale face. And then they switched over to the tan face for this next guy here. Because you can see it's a little transparent. And I think the designers didn't like that you could kind of see the black head through the pale face there just didn't look as good so they darkened the ink made the stormtroopers tan how did they get a tan i've got no idea but that's what makes this guy unique is the fact that he's got a tan balaclava face uh the print was the same and you know what these guys came out in different years so i'll, I'll show them off one by one but this is the first of the sith troopers like the sith troopers from the old stories technically i think this all counts as legends really nice printing though reflective detailing on the chest no printing for the uh for the legs, and he's got the pretty stern expression. We're getting very close to the clone face, uh, but we're not quite there yet. And then this has the same printing one year later, uh, same printing, uh, but he's got more printing that matches up for the legs now instead. Same uh, print for the face. And then this Sith Trooper has some nice red highlights, which I think look a whole heck of a lot better. Uh, he just looks a little bit more menacing. Uh, the red just pops uh, much nicer. And if you look at his face, he's actually slightly more angry. He's got a he's got a unique little uh, face print there that makes him slightly different from the from the other Sith troopers. This 2013 Scout Trooper is amazing. Honestly, they they have updated him since then. You'll see the update later, but. This guy looks great. I think this guy, even if he came out nowadays, uh, would still be a pretty uh, nice fig to get. I think he, he's a pretty clean looking dude. He's got the tan balaclava face still, so you can turn it around, uh, you know, because you don't want the tan face sticking out the open, uh, the open bit of the front of the helmet. And speaking of which, that's exactly uh, what I did for this guy. So when I lift his piece up, you can see the tan balaclava face. But actually, this is the first updated print that we have for the snow Trooper, which is kind of crazy. The snow troopers went a very long time without getting any updates. Good looking fig. And then you guys will probably recognize this stormtrooper. He is incredibly common. He came out in a ton, a ton, a ton of sets and check out his face. There we go. This is the classic stormtrooper face that they're still using uh, nowadays. He's technically that face appeared on clone trooper figs first. Uh, I know a lot of people like to point that out. So it really is a clone trooper face, but yeah, he's got updated detailings for the printing on his helmet. It's totally new and the leg print detailing is different from what we saw from those uh those sand troopers the back is slightly different as well so he really is a totally uh, updated guy through and through and then they took that baseline printing and added sandy stuff plus a little ammo thing on the shoulder here and now we've got another sand trooper his black shoulder pauldron has a few little gray line detailings uh, printed in there as well. And I don't know what it is about guys with the shoulder pauldrons, but they're always a bit more collectible. He's a $15 fig if you want to get them brand new. And then I know a lot of people really weren't that big of fans when LEGO did this, but this is the Rebels Stormtrooper. So the printing for his body, this includes the legs, the front, the back, everything, and the helmet especially. This is what people don't like so much, is that the, that little, uh, the nose is a bit more pointed and it doesn't actually follow that ridge line. Uh, they didn't bother to change the mold for the helmet because it didn't make sense for them to do that, but they changed the printing on it. So that line is actually above that little break in the nose, which is, it's just off. People aren't really a big fan of that. He came out in a ton of sets though. He's super, super easy to get. And here is our third Royal Guard. He is uh, all red with dark red arms and hands. So that's what makes him unique. He's still got uh, that stiff cape. Uh, his spear is brown now, but same printing like we saw in the very beginning. And here is a snow trooper, snow trooper here with a camera. Check it out. He's got a camera neck bracket with a little printed piece that shows like a power cell or a pack on his back. So that's pretty cool. He's got the standard stormtrooper face under there if you really want to see it. There he is and let's move on. And now we're looking at a snow trooper commander. You can see the different uh, chest printing there. That's the that's the little indicator there to show the rank. So he's got a different chest printing that makes him unique. And then we are moving on. This is still the standard, actually not standard. The uh, This is a Stormtrooper Sergeant, but he's got the Rebel detailing there. So the body is similar to the Rebel Stormtrooper, but he's got the little white pauldron, which is nice for a guy who appeared in a promotional polybag. He's still relatively cheap. 
And then here is a, another Rebels Stormtrooper, but he doesn't have the Clone Trooper style face. He's like the only Stormtrooper ever that doesn't have this Clone Trooper style face once the year has passed. So that's kind of interesting. Can't tell if that was just like a fluke on Lego's part to change the face up randomly for one guy in one set. But this guy and well, let's just say this guy, the, uh, the Shadow Trooper and the Shadow Guard, uh, they both came out in the same set and they're awesome. I really like both of these guys, but I especially like the Shadow Trooper because of just the cool detailing that we get for him. I believe his armor is supposed to be made of uh, Dura steel, so you can see it's been weathered in the front, but shiny in places where it hasn't really been totally uh, uh, beaten down, and I just think it's a great bit of detailing. Color inversion here is nice, it's super simple, but it's actually pretty effective. He definitely looks like a menacing guard. And now we have entered the realm of the First Order. So this is the first of the First Order Stormtroopers. He appeared in a massive amount of sets, really nice detailing form all around just so you guys know for sure same same printing that we always get uh, i do like the mold for the helmet quite a lot the first order stormtrooper officer came out in one set the only difference is that he's got this little pauldron not a bad look i like it it's, it's almost red it looks red or maybe really really deep orange i can't quite tell it could be red and it definitely increases his price now this is the snow trooper he's got uh, a camera the first order stormtrooper a uh, little neck bracket little detailing here Nice looking guy all around. I like the printing for the legs uh, a little bit more than the Stormtrooper. And in one of those sets, there was a commander version, which is exact same, but you got the shoulder pauldron. Now this guy was cool. I'm glad they included him in several different sets. The Flame Trooper, uh, uh, quite a bit of nice accessories, uh, special mold, which is great for the helmet and exclusive printing for, I mean, uh, unique printing for him all around. Really like that he came out in several sets. Now here is the first of the Captain Phasmas. She is a $12 fig, not bad, great detailing. Um, and I know I've mentioned this once before, but it would be great to have her in chrome for the future. Some of you might already know, but she doesn't have a face here, just a standard black head. And this is the first guy of the next year. We've got the Imperial Jump Trooper, and a lot of people associate uh, the timing of his release and the fact that he's got a jump jet on his back uh, with the Battlefront 2 game. I really like the battle damage on him though. It's uh, it's pretty darn good actually. It's basically a standard stormtrooper uh, that just has some extra cuts and scrapes and blaster shots all over him. And uh, pretty good printing and mold that makes up the jump pack, the jet pack on the back. And from the same battle pack comes a shock trooper. Really cool looking printing. I love the red highlights. Definitely a unique version of a stormtrooper for sure and here is the heavy gunner for the first order he too also came out in a battle pack set and you can see uh, just the heavy sort of ammo armaments that are on his chest. I think he's good for uh, reloading. And then the May 4th promo poly bag came out with another heavy gunner. You can see the difference. He's just got that little thing on his shoulder, just higher up. That's the only thing that makes him different. He's definitely, uh, a lot of people considered him uh, uh, pretty much a disappointment uh, for such an exclusive release. And then this guy is not an exclusive fig. I just like that he came with this uh, baton piece. He appeared in the Battle of Takodana. The fig isn't unique and technically this doesn't count uh, as like a unique figure but I just liked that he came out with a unique weapon and we're moving on to this guy. He's a first order snow trooper with no camera for the first time. Technically that counts as a unique release. I think they did that because he appeared in a micro fighter and the seat was kind of uh, close together and the camera probably would have gotten in the way and then we've got a royal guard with a soft cloth cape. Ooh yeah, there we go. He can spin him around with barely hitting the other guys. Uh, soft cloth cape, that's what makes him unique. And then this standard snow trooper comes with no camera. Came out in a Star Wars Advent calendar. No camera makes him a unique release and we've got a death trooper. Finally a guy that's cool again. Sorry, we went through a lot of repeats. And here is a totally updated new mold. Totally updated new prints. I like that it's all gray. He's just really, really kind of blacked out. Uh, the little green highlights on his helmet look awesome. With the black shoulder pauldron, he is a $7 figure. It only came out in one set. And then here is a sand trooper. Or sorry, I think Imperial Shore Trooper is like his 
his like official name. I love the sand green though that uh, is made up on the arm and goes on to the chest. New molds for the helmet, great detailing all around. Really, really a good looking trooper. And then this next guy is slightly different. He's got slightly different printing for the legs, the chest, uh, two sand green arms and he appeared uh, in one of those collectible little rotation thingies. The black camo definitely makes him unique and he's called the, Scar he's called the Scarif uh, Stormtrooper, not the Imperial Shore Trooper for some weird reason. And then we've got a tanner version of both of those guys, also uh, known as the Scarif Stormtrooper or a Scarif Stormtrooper. And I do like that ammo belt printing on the leg. I think this is the best version, honestly. Uh, he just looks really cool. They're all basically the same price. And then this is, I guess it counts, Technically, it's a unique release because he's got no camera and he doesn't have the same little piece underneath that power cell bit uh, that the other guys did. So technically that just counts as like a different build out for a minifigure, like a different build out for armor. Now we've moved on to a Death Trooper with no pauldron. He came out in a couple more sets. He's a lot more accessible, uh, a lot cheaper actually than the guy with the pauldron. And then this is a first order Stormtrooper with a white pauldron, which makes him unique. And then just like the last guy with riot gear, he's got slightly different riot gear and a special little shield uh, with, a, with a print here. So he's not a unique figure, technically speaking, because unique figures don't count for uh, the accessories that they hold, but I like to include them in the collection. And then here is a guy. He looks the same as the rest, except look at the print on his helmet. Uh, and maybe a little bit on the rest of the body, but really just the helmet has a more pointed uh, nose print. It's just kind of updated. The mold is the same, but technically that makes him unique. And then here is another heavy gunner and he's got a neck bracket. So yeah. Unique release, once again. Now we've got another uh, snow trooper. He's got no camera or bracket. Whoa, because stormtroopers usually have one or the other or both. So that's this is the guy that's totally stripped down. Then we come up with a couple of new sand troopers. The squad leader here in orange is worth a little bit more, but the printing here pretty much mimics the same time we saw these guys the last time. The reason why the black isn't exactly the same, the black pauldron guy, is because the build on his back is slightly different than the build on his back from the, uh, the, the previous iteration. So there's those two guys and then a white pauldron stormtrooper as well so here he is white pauldron that never existed on a uh, on a trooper of this exact type of print and now we've got an interesting pretty unique first order guy this is one of the executioners so he's got black arms the torso has a uh, little bit of extra black on the top there to match up with the arms but the most distinctive feature is of course this black stripe on him he's got a pretty unique execution tool as well and then kind of going in hand in hand similar scene same scene uh, we get another phasma and uh, this is an updated helmet print the more pointed one so that is the difference between her and the last one her weapons are also a little different as well and then snoke's throne room gives us this praetorian guard technically two they've got different weapons but it's the same figure great new pieces here this is one of the first times we ever saw a new skirt piece or a new gown piece uh, which is unique just for minifigs which is kind of cool great looking mold for the helmets uh, yeah, nice all around. I even like the uh, the shoulder pauldron armor piece. Now we're looking at a pretty interesting guy. This is the range trooper. You saw him in the solo movie. He's got a white blaster rifle. Very interesting. Uh, unique printing also for the helmet. Even a special little cloth uh, underpinned thing. Uh, as well, so very, very unique guy. And also only found in one set is this Imperial Patrol Trooper from a little battle pack, unique dual molded helmet. So uh, pretty interesting. Um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about there, how it's white and black on the inside and outside. Uh, very, very kind of cool looking guy. Also the prints are just kind of fun. I like the different breakup of a little bit more black included. And then this might actually be my favorite single trooper here, the Mimben Stormtrooper, uh, also from Solo. 
great looking uh, cape piece or it's, you know, it's got the hood there. It's kind of like the raincoat that would go over because it's a pretty muddy, dirty battlefield. And the same goes for the printing here. I especially like that they decided to try to reconnect the groin piece printing, but it doesn't actually connect because they always, Lego always leaves a little bit of space there when you jump back to the really first time they tried that back in 2005, that print was actually closer together, which I always found kind of interesting. Here is the latest version of a scout trooper. I gotta say, I do like him a little more than the last time we got him, but not in some huge way. I don't think he's like masterfully done like way better. I do think the last version of uh, a scout trooper was still pretty darn good. Is his helmet dual molded? I actually don't. Yeah, his helmet is dual molded. Uh, I think that's just going to be like the standard for a lot of these newer guys as we move down the line. Here is the updated shadow trooper. Very cool. So he's not the Durasteel one with like the gray and gunmetal, but he's kind of like the original updated Shadow Trooper. So he's he's basically like a Death Trooper, except he's got the regular Stormtrooper helmet and the regular Stormtrooper prints for his body. Really cool looking. I like this guy a lot though. He's so simple, just inverted to complete black. Now it's funny, you're seeing all these dual molded helmets and now we're finally actually just getting to the standard Stormtrooper helmet again. Dual molded, gotta say, I don't like the fact that the front of the helmet hangs over so much now. Um, because you can't turn the head anymore, but there it is, the dual molding. Uh, the detailing on the outside I think does look better, but the fact that the head can no longer turn on a Stormtrooper just makes them less expressive and poseable in general. The printing for his body feels maybe not updated, but just a little cleaner. Perhaps the printing techniques uh, changed up slightly. I do think the design is pretty much essentially the same as it was before. And now we've got another dirtied up sand trooper. He's got himself an orange pauldron and uh, yes, a dual molded helmet. So the build on the back of him is the same. The helmet is prim primarily the updated piece here. And this snow trooper has been updated as well, both with the chest printing, he now finally has leg printing. Is this the first snow trooper with leg printing? That's crazy. Uh, dark tan hands, which I think is nice. It kind of pops out a little bit. And now we've got the uh, elite Praetorian guards or from the elite Praetorian guard battle pack, we've got two more Praetorian guards. Uh, they have legs now with printing on the legs instead of the skirt pieces. And this guy's got a new helmet mold, which is cool. The back is great. Uh, yeah, nice. So uh, there are technically, I would say, four unique Praetorian Guards if you want to include their weapons. Now we're looking at Aiden Versio. She's uh, the squad leader or commander for Inferno Squad. And uh, yeah, she looks pretty good. Look at the, uh, the detailing there is pretty darn good. She's got, does she have an alternate expression? She does a battle face, which I feel like is pretty darn appropriate for this, for this character. And uh, the next guy, if you look under, they've got unique expressions here. You can see the utility belt in black, which is great. This is Del Mico, or at least a lot of people think so. Uh, great looking helmet though. The Inferno Squad helmet is awesome. I know they look like pilot helmets, but uh, play the game and tell me if you don't think uh, they meet the criteria for a trooper. Uh, this is Gideon Hask, I believe. And uh, righto, the detailing is the same here. He does not have a utility belt only, only this guy does. And then this is a standard Stormtrooper face under here. So technically there are all four different unique figs and they all have uh, slightly different weapons. The stud shooters, I'm not really a big fan of. It kind of fits for this big fat gun here though. And uh, let's move on to just the last couple of guys. This is the First Order Jet Trooper from the Pisana Speeder Chase set, a pretty darn recent set. Uh, like the new mold here on the back, I like the new mold for the helmet. The printing is fine for the most part. It's, it's different, unique. This Snow Trooper has a cape, which is interesting. The first Snow Trooper of any kind to have uh, a cape, which I find uh, I don't know, just unique in, in some interesting way. And then this is the Sith Trooper, the First Order Sith Trooper. I think they're just calling him Sith Trooper, maybe not necessarily First Order. We don't really know. The movie's not out yet as of uh, the making of this video, but 
Nice to see an all red trooper uniform in general. Now there's other guys that have been uh, teased and shown off, officially shown off by LEGO, uh, that will be coming out at the end of this month. So uh, these are the pictures of them. They obviously will be added to the collection, but let's jump back to all of these guys together one more time. All right, that is gonna be it for this collection review video, guys. There was a lot in this one. Uh, I like to end by saying for any new figs coming down the line, I think the top one that I would want to be added to the collection was still would be chrome phasma just because that makes sense for that figure to be chromified instead of flat silver but outside of that it would be cool to kind of get a dirtied up stormtrooper like we saw from the mandalorian where they're kind of tinted red like from that opening scene that would be cool uh but anyways that's about it Thank you so much for watching. Remember, let me know what types of collections you want to see me do in the future. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Check out our web store if you want to buy these display cases, if that's something that you might be interested in. And right out, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.